You're listening to The Artist Athlete, episode 123. This podcast is dedicated to circus. It's a place for professionals in the industry to share their stories, viewpoints, and information, and a place for outsiders to get a sneak peek into this world. Hey, friends, fans, and foes, I'm Shannon McKenna. I'm the host of the Artist Athlete Podcast and the founder of theartistathlete.com. This is the final episode of the Artist Athlete Podcast for 2021. Don't worry, y'all. We'll be back in 2022. I already have some really crazy episodes planned for you guys. But just as a retrospective, I want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in this year. If you discovered the podcast for the first time or you're like an OG back from like 2018, I super appreciate having you guys around, especially and always shout out to my Patreons, patreon.com slash the artist athlete. And I also want to shout out just because it's the end of the year, anyone who donated to the Kickstarter campaign to help episode 100. Oh, that was such a big episode. And my editor pulled through my amazing assistant got Victor, we got a translator and we just did the thing. And I want to thank everybody who was a part of that Kickstarter campaign for doing that. Lots of amazing episodes this year. We talked about big topics such as eating disorders. We talked about death and grief. As always, we talked about what it means to make art. And also some really great icons came on the show. I can't believe some of the people I talked to this year. I mean, Elena Lev, hello. Victor Key, oh my God. And trust me, guys, even though we're taking a little break for the rest of 2021, 2022 is going to have some amazing guests as well. So, If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the podcast. If you want to help us out, patreon.com slash the artist athlete is the place to go to ensure that we bring you great content every week, except for the weeks that it's the holidays and we got to take some time off. But any money that is not going toward paying my editor this month will be going toward her Christmas present. It all works out in the end. Thanks, Patreons. And so the final guests for the year of 2021 for the Artist Athlete Podcast is actually two guests widely requested by all y'all. I can't think of a week in which I didn't get a DM from one person out there on Instagram being like, hey, hey, bring on Girls Gone Rope. Bring on Girls Gone Rope. And I was like, you know what? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That is the only thing we can possibly do. I'm a huge fan of these two women. So, Girls Gone Rope, let me tell you about it. Girls Gone Rope is a synchronized cordly say duo. We'll talk about what that is in the episode. And here's their bio. I love it. It's poetry. What is power and what is powerful? What is strong and what is strength? What is female and what is feminine? Women are thoughtful before taking action. I mean, can't relate. I'm total impulsive ADD person. But uh, anyway, most women are thoughtful before taking action. Deliberate and specific in each of her decisions. Our polished technicality shows the spectrum of femininity, ranging from soft and precise to dynamic and wild. In this act, we have consumed ourselves with showing the female form through synchronicity and syncopation. The Girls Gone Rope Project was born in 2017 with the impromptu pairing of Eve Diamond and PJ Perry. Those are my two guests today. They found a balance in working together, exploring each other's different yet complementary strengths on and off the rope. So much of the physical research for this collaboration pushed Eve and PJ beyond what they believed to be their limits. They were a part of the Circus Monty Tour, and in 2021 did the Circus Princess Festival in Russia. And here on the podcast today are two of my favorite people, Eve Diamond and PJ Perry, the Girls Gone Rope. PJ and Eve Diamond, welcome to the Artist Athlete Podcast. Hi. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey. So cool to have two people on. We've I've done this before, but I've never done it on like the interwebs. I've always done it in person. So it's pretty cool to have you both on. And you're my first aerial duo. All right. Woo-hoo! 
Yeah. Couldn't think of a better one. You're a fan favorite. I had a few requests for you. Oh, Me too. That's exciting. We're famous, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. Aww. You're totally famous. Let's do it this way. Why don't you guys, like one at a time, kind of introduce yourselves, say who you are, like a little bit about your backgrounds, and then we'll get into like how you got together as a duo. Eve, do you want to start? Okay, I'll start. <laughs> uh, I'm Eve. I started circus when I was 12 in a circus summer camp in Vermont called Circus Smirkus, which is now grown to be this international youth circus thing. But I started way back in the 90s. And I have been pursuing circus as a career professionally since about 2000. And 11, after doing three years of an aerial training program in San Francisco, and I met PJ in, ooh, maybe 2016 or 17 right. in a rope workshop. Yeah. Isn't that where we met? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Seattle. Mm -hmm. In Seattle, right. We were taking a workshop and... Uh, gravitated towards each other I suppose yeah I was like that girl knows what she's doing I'm gonna hang out over there <laughs> I was also thinking that like that girl can hang forever with one arm and her pants are really cool I had cool pants I don't remember what they were but you had cool pants all right <laughs> yeah. cool pants it's the connection it's the connector. It's the way to go. <laughs> so if you're looking for a duo out there, anyone, wear cool pants and um, <laughs> your part, your bestie will find you. Yeah. It's uh, like a red PJ flag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a duo partner. Look at my butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I found you. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, PJ? How did, what, what's your, tell us a little bit about yourself. So this is my, I guess, second career. So I started circus when I was 28. That was like in the midst of an awesome divorce and like reevaluating my whole life. And I saw this really, really cute local circus called the Dream Science Circus here up in Bellingham. And I like so many people thought I could do that. And, you know, lo and behold, I could, which was really neat too. So I... Uh, one of my friends was actually part of that, and she wanted to learn some Pilates. That was my first career, teaching a whole bunch of Pilates. So we did a little train, and I learned some silks on my own, and then joined the Bellingham Circus Guild and pretty much did my own thing for a really, really long time, um, gradually learning by banging my head against the wall and not getting instruction when I really should have. And But being kind of isolated up north, it's, it wasn't easy to do that. There's no school around or anything like that so just kind of attending workshops when I could and then just practicing a lot on my own and um yeah it eventually I started with silks because I thought that was pretty neat and then um I got picked up by a troupe at the time there was an all-girls troupe called the Aerialistas and they needed a flyer so a friend of mine noticed that I was rather small in stature and fit the bill because I could had good middle splits and <laughs> could potentially learn this duo static hoop act. It was like six people synchronized duo static hoop act and went to Germany and like learned on the job, like doing variety. And I was like, well, this is a totally different experience. And then that troop got asked back to the same variety in Germany and um, our fearless leader, Lara Paxton was like, we'll do ropes. I'd never touched a rope. We had a month to throw an act together. <laughs> it was crazy. But the director just liked all the girls. He thought that was a fun thing to have a whole bunch of girls doing aerial at once. Big aerial piece. So that was my first exposure to rope, which is my primary apparatus. I thought, this is really hard. I couldn't do half the things that was asked of me, but I tried my best and um, pointed my toes and got through it. And um, then found my love, which is rope. And that was like in 2012. So been uh gradually weaning myself off of the the day job and i think i went full-time circus like in 2018 you 
uh, saw that each other were wearing cool pants, or Eve was wearing cool pants. <laughs> yeah. um, you both liked that each other were super strong. When did that kind of turn into, hey, we should make an act together? Oh. Yeah, Andrew our friend Leah Jones. Yeah, Leah Jones. She was trying to start an all female contemporary circus troupe in Seattle. She saw and felt a need for kind of a multimedia dance circus orgy. And <laughs> I guess curated, curated some people uh, and had the idea that we would make something together. Just out of, I feel like it was an idea out of nowhere, just like, oh, you two should work together. And we were like, okay, cool. Dope. And then, yeah, I think, I don't, I don't well, remember we when we kind of like, thought one to do synchronized. Well, so I think, was that? <laughs> no, it was everybody's idea. Like we had okay. actually thought it would be cool. We had like jammed once before and we're like, yeah. let's do synchronized flares. And we're like, ooh, that's a fun thing. So we just had never really worked together and we got up and we're like, wow, that, that looks actually really cool. And then when we went to our first meeting and Leah's like telling people that they work, she's like, I think you guys should do synchro. We're like, huh. That's kind of funny because we're already just nibbling at it. Right. For the people at home, can you explain like what that means? Synchronized? Yeah. Well, <laughs> in the context <laughs> of what you do, not just like the word in general, because I think a lot of people, when they think like a duo act, they think of like duo trapeze or they think of like two mm. people hanging off of the same apparatus. And that's not what you guys do. Mm, right. Um, so can you explain that? I feel one of the first things I always say when I say I do a duo rope act is two girls, two ropes. <laughs> two girls, two ropes. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> That's the start. Two girls, this two ropes. This is a like, language barrier. You're like, no, no, no. Yeah. Two girls two ropes like that's like really important <laughs> yeah 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 for sure and you do the same and synchronized obviously mm -hmm. it's maybe not obviously you're doing the same things for the most part at the same time exactly. where there's like a relationship choreographically between the two of you yeah but i yes. think there's i've seen some synchro where there's a the thing that, that is interesting about this is that because we're on a swivel each of us are rigged on a swivel. At no point can we guarantee that we can see each other. So everything is incredibly based on counts. Um, basically, you have to be able to do the whole thing with your eyes closed. So I've done other synchro where there is counts, but there's also um, points you can check in a little bit. Mm -hmm. more, like yeah, 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 yeah. what the other person is doing and kind of react to something. And it's just it's completely count based except for one funky part in the middle that's right. wild was that always the way that the act was yeah yes yeah yeah cool <laughs> i'm yeah. like why why <laughs> that's an amazing <laughs> question well yeah because it sounds so yeah. hard like why why well because it's we can't totally see hard it. yeah it's totally yes, hard <laughs> and that's probably why we do it because of the challenge. <laughs> well, also, I mean, nobody, I haven't seen a lot of, I, I can't say nobody, but I haven't seen anybody else like go through with it and mm. we're working on it. And it's because it's freaking hard. We were working on it and Terry Crane watched a rehearsal. He was like, I, I, no, I'd never do synchro. That's just like, what? no way, no way. That's too hard. And it is hard. He's right. Like, I've seen a lot of people start to try <laughs> and then they yeah. give up the project rather quickly. So without revealing too many secrets, like, do you, did you guys along the way of like creating this come up with a way or like a formula or a process together to figure out how to do everything together, even though you couldn't see each other? Like, was it just like eight count foundationally like dance? Did you have music? What was the what was the anchor point, I guess, to ensure that synchronicity? I feel one of the starting points was finding skills that we could both do and then learning how to do them the same way. And then as we built some like vocabulary together, then putting that to music so that it became easier to like this leg goes here on this number and here and here and here because separately, 
what, like what we do in the act together is ex- so different than what we would both do separately performing solo rope, you know, mm. the act. Yeah. Big time. Like PJ can do crazy high level, all the, all the cool stuff that's popular in rope PJ's got down. And but you know, what she does on her own is so different than what we're doing together and vice versa. I have such a different solo rope vocabulary. So it was really finding, okay, what skills can we actually both do and can we do them the same way? And the best mm-hmm. way to do them the same way is to put it to account. And then mm. we found music that we liked and yeah, it was. And just, we had to pay process. attention to each other too. Like, so this going off the same thing as Eve can make any shape look really amazing. And there's, I, I think I've just got really funny proportions. There's some things that just don't work like classic pinup girl shapes. I'm like, oh no, no, no. Like you want to, if I'm supposed to stick my boobs out, I'm going to stick my whole rib cage up and back and <laughs> it still won't look right. Like it just doesn't work so really finding those things that we can both make work but also we discovered that we hear tempo differently (laughs) and so what you know like if you think about music like when I I did a lot of music in college and when we were doing jazz work we're thinking about like being you want to like sit back on the beat you're going to be on the back side of the beat so it's like wait you don't start at the W, you start at the T of weight. Wait. Okay. You know, how you hear the beat. And Eve hears the beat at the front of the beat, and I hear it at the back of the beat. So we have really different impulses. And we can look at it and be like, it's off. We're watching each other move, and we're not perfectly synchronized. And then we count it, and we're both on the beat. But actually, in that little wiggle room, we're, we're on, she's on the front side, and I'm on the back side, typically. Sometimes, every once in a while, that would switch. And then there's the other part of, okay, you're trying to do a straddle up quickly. Well, Eve's proportions are really different than mine. And so my fastest straddle up isn't as fast as hers. And Mm. so we had to do some technical changes of like working with in, in, in that particular example, like changing my straddle technique to get there because I've got this long ass torso and sometimes it's hard to get my ass up and just you know, figuring out how to make it faster and like really watching how her body moves. And she would really watch how my body moves with some of the rolly stuff. And then like, okay, how do we, how do we eke this out of our bodies when it's totally not our natural way of moving? Exactly. And the, that process is honestly time commitment, which Mm -hmm. we did. We were, I mean, in the beginning, it was a couple hours here and there. And then as it became clear how much time um yeah like driving me driving two hours north to Bellingham or sometimes PJ was coming down to Seattle and like really investing in that time in really small chunks at a time even though we have this big idea very little bites (laughs) Mm. very little bites very small so small (laughs) interesting what like PJ talks about like uh with her inversion like changing her technique so that it could be synchronized like, how did you guys come to those kinds of conclusions? Was it like on a case by case basis where you would say, OK, we want this to be a fast straddle up. So PJ needs to change her technique versus like, oh, we'll do the straddle up slower. I think that's always interesting in duos where the give is or like when you're accounting for the other person and how that works. And each duo kind of I feel like has a different way of relating to it. Yeah, the overall goal is that we want it to look clean. So there's a give and take there about, you know, what has to be sacrificed so that the end result is extremely together. Because when it's not together, even a tiny bit, you you know, you see it. We we really want people to look like in the middle of both of us. So when it's mm. off a bit, it's not worth, oh, well, I like it this way. It's like, well, cool. That doesn't help. (laughs) I don't know. There's a lot of give and take. And it's just the ability to adapt and work together and communicate, you know, in an objective and kind way as well of saying, okay, I like this shape or I like this movement quality. I can't do it like that. What needs to change so that the end result is it's super clean and tight. Mm. And that was always a fun 
process because I mean I think fun. you know over time it's fun it was hard over time we really just did come together on the and this was a negotiation process it took us a long time to kind of figure each other out we didn't know each other that well so just like learning how oh PJ gets really frustrated if things move too quickly like I I, I take a long time to learn things and then I can get really overwhelmed and he was just like will sometimes like go, I want to do this technique and just get stuck on it. Like it doesn't need to be that technique. We can do whatever technique suits your body that fits the count. So just, we kind of figured that out over time, but the ultimate goal that we came to that we're really together on is that we need to be together. That is the ultimate goal. So we can let go of technique, add technique, whatever. But if I'm like, there were some things where I just needed one more count to complete the movement. I couldn't just move fast enough. And so we'd have to borrow counts from another portion of the music to open up a spot so that both of us could complete mm. it cleanly if it was too fast for me. And that happened also for, for Eve, like the exact same process where, um, and it was typically like if both of us brought choreography to the table, of course. So if Eve brought the choreography to the table, that choreography was always harder for me. If I brought choreography to the table, that choreography was always harder for her. If yeah, it wasn't right. harder choreography either way, uh -huh. we have such different bodies. And so whoever brought it, I think kind of had the, the job of being really patient and kind and not being attached to it, letting it breathe and doing the best to help the other person adapt to it. And if that meant we had to chop something or add counts or take counts away, um, we were both really willing to do that. And when we have to make changes, like, so we had the idea, okay, we'll start making an act. And then we had these small pieces. We had like, we had like a minute and a half of material that wasn't necessarily in an order, but they were just sections that eventually would go somewhere. And then it was when we were in Switzerland in 2019 with Circus Monty that we had two months to every day devote lots of hours, which is where we actually finished, make amusing air quotes, because it's never really done um, <laughs> ever, sure. ever. And, you know, adaptability also in this, whatever spaces we're performing in and to make a, to make a change, you know, we see, okay, we're performing this. This is definitely not going well. I'm too fast. You're too slow. It's not clean. <laughs> whatever issue is going on to change, to change a count of eight at 105 beats per minute, which is, it's not like super duper slow or super duper fast but that takes hours <laughs> mm. to change one eight count one two three four five six seven eight could take hours i mean like at least 10 <laughs> hours wow. yeah, yeah because it's never just eight too like that yeah eight, also never just that that'd be amazing for it and the eight after yeah. it and sometimes then you have to it like it's a ripple effect of modification that just goes wow. on and on and never stops <laughs> <laughs> so all of all of this all of the parts of the act have funny little names so that we know how to refer to them and one of them we were calling stressica because it was a stressful transition that PJ had offered to the choreography that she could do every time flawlessly <laughs> and I could do it most of the time but the other most of the time I would get so stuck on the rope or my costume and I'd have to do all these little adjustments. Anyway, Stressica was maybe a count of four and it took hours to fix, to find another way to do the same thing that wasn't a Stressica or that ate my costume. And it's just a, a funny thing because it was so small, but it took a really long time to, to change. And we were on tour, so we were doing lots of shows mm -hmm. and maybe had an, a half hour to work on it each day had to just chip away at it. And it, I mean, I think it probably took two or three weeks before we could actually try it in the show. And then I remember we tried it, but we hadn't counted it right. And then we had all this extra time. <laughs> we were in the, in the show and like, uh, in the middle of the act, I remember thinking, Oh no, <laughs> now, now we're off. <laughs> it's just silly. Anyway, being able to roll with the things that happen that are wrong or off or also, in the moment, they kind of hurt your ego, but are really the fun parts of working hmm. together, trying to do an impossible task of move <laughs> together with a person far away, six feet away. It's so cool. Oh, hey there. 
I just wanted to interrupt this interview real quick to just say one real quick little thing about myself, which is that I am not only the host of the Artist Athlete Podcast. No, no, no. She is a business woman, and I run a whole company dedicated to the education and inspiration of circus artists. That goes from people who are just doing it, weekend warriors as a hobbyist, recreationally, or if you're a professional, you've put in the hours and you need more resources. Go to the artist athlete.com. There are a ton of recorded workshops, online manuals and ebooks, everything you could possibly need from me and from some guests on this show about everything from nutrition to training your shoulders to really specific aerial moves that you need to master. Again, theartistathlete.com. And just because you went there from listening to this podcast, use code podcast and get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. Theartistathlete.com. Use code podcast at checkout for 15% off your entire purchase and have a great day. Back to the episode. It's also, I'm always interested like with ideas, with movements, with skills, all of that, like that decision to keep working on it or keep hammering at a, away at it as opposed to changing it, like which one will take more time or is worth doing, you know? It sounds like you're confronting a lot of that in these times where you're like, it's going to take us hours and hours and hours to change mm -hmm. this, but that's the better decision. Well, with stress cut, like <laughs> we really, we stress put it off. We put Can we interview off. Stressica? Can she also come on the podcast? <laughs> oh, man, that girl. She's gone. I don't want her here. I don't want her here. She's not allowed. She's, She's gone. gone. <laughs> She's out of Girls Gone Rope. She's excommunicated. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. But no, like Stressica. that one, we really, we really just because it was going to be such a pain in the ass to change, we, we just kept trying. And then it was like, finally, like, oh my God, this can't keep happening. And mm. I think for that four counts, we ended up having to change about 32 counts of choreography to make a four count change for a move okay. that takes four And counts. our manager on tour also was like, that part looks rough. Yeah. Why do you keep <laughs> getting stuck, Eve? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's just such a hard part for me, I guess. And yeah, it was, yeah, that was the decision of, I got really good at getting out of it quickly and even though it's such a small amount of time that the synchronicity is off, it's it stands out. Mm -hmm. And right. we don't want people to remember the few moments that we were off. We want them to remember the majority of the moments that we're on. Yeah, that synchronicity. It almost I always go back to juggling as one of the few circus arts and there are others, too, where there's like an obvious um, fail. You know, like yeah. if you are juggling and you drop the ball, like it is obvious that you have dropped the ball. Now, some jugglers are very good at like recovering from that. But and it sounds like with the synchronized act, like it's almost like that ball drop. If you guys get off, you know, you can recover, but everyone knows because it's the nature of the beast. And I say, well, this is live performance and you are welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> this is a live performance and you're welcome. It will be different every time. I think too, um, we have all these little, we have a lot of moments to get back together spaced throughout that are our markers that, okay, yeah, our straddle ups are really different here, but in two counts after we can both hit this every time the same. So there's lots of these moments where we find each other again pretty 10 out of 10. So mm -hmm. we allow for a little bit of wiggle room because the overall markers will get us back together. We try to have a lot of those. Cool. Um, you said earlier your overall goal was to be synchronized. Like when you were looking at the act, that was the outcome you wanted. Or did you ever have a conversation about what you wanted the overall goal to be professionally? You talked a little bit about how you were like driving back and forth to work on these little parts. Um, did you always know that you were going to take it to Circus Monty or go to, you know, Russia or do these like bigger things? Were both of you on board with that? Or was that something that just came out of the goal to be synchronized and create the act you did? I feel like maybe it was unspoken, but I think we were both definitely looking for big work and, um, you know, solo female aerialist is tough. It's really tough. Um, Eve does really well, but I stink at selling it. So I, I've never gotten a contract on my own. Um, Eve 
has definitely and she has beautiful solo corda volant but man to to kind of stand out especially with a vertical apparatus i think you know both of us maybe in the back i'm speaking mostly for myself but i i think he's on board but in the back of our head we're like what what can we do on rope that will stand out without going the like i'm gonna do five pirouettes in a row with no crash mat or the thing that's the direction that rope is going right now that neither one of us are particularly interested in so yeah i think it was yeah there. i think be- totally because also the time investment we wanted to reap some reward of that work that we had put in and i've always believed in this act as something that's different and like pj said you know solo female aerial i'm a dozen Mm -hmm. and it's tough because there's a ton of incredible solo female aerial out there and now we're just two solo female aerialists (laughs) together (laughs) (laughs) but i mean we i i always have believed that this is interesting and different and worthy of of work of people seeing it especially as the trend keeps going up for you know seeing women seeing strong women and yeah I think I asked the question because I do see this a lot where like a duo will artistically kind of be in line and understand but then one person will want to get married and have kids and the other person will want to continue or you know they have there are these conversations that have to happen um, and yeah. when do you have those conversations? How do you have those conversations? But it sounds like you guys are just on the same page, which is ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think as I think we continue to want to promote it, but yeah, lives are changing and I'm I'm not 100 percent sure my body can do a tour right now. And I think there is nothing wrong with putting it out there and seeing what we get and then making those decisions as they come. I mean, I feel like trust the net wide and, you know, how I feel this morning might be different than next morning. And I don't want to limit our options based on that. And then, you know, just there's, there's so many things life can change in an instant. So I just, I think we just keep casting wide. Yeah. Work. Absolutely. Love that. Eve, you mentioned before, uh, or you started to before I cut you off about this trend of strong women aerialists and something that struck me i mean it it wasn't surprising to me because i know both of your work i'm huge fans of both of you so it wasn't surprising but that you didn't go a certain route that we see in like more traditional circus you you guys aren't like the sexy you know like tits out you're not a girl's gun it's almost like tongue in cheek that you would call yourselves girls gun rope because that's that's not what's presented oh really did i nail it pj Fuck yeah Oh, I feel smart today. <laughs> you smart. Sweet. Um, yeah. Obviously, that was intentional <laughs> from what I just know. But can you talk about like how, because you knew Synchronize and you, it sounds like have a lot of like working, a great working relationship over talking about technique and all of that. But like, as far as artistry and presentation, like where did that idea come from? How did that generate? Well, PJ's hot as hell. Mm -hmm. And I knew working together, we, I mean, there's an inherent beauty to women with huge biceps, which we both have. And also I, just from what I've seen, you know, I've seen relationships and duos that are sexy or like chasing and I feel kind of organically and also just our personalities. We just want to have a good time together. (laughs) And that's the relationship that we're demonstrating. It's, it's not a, it's not a competition. We're just two babes having fun. And we try to show that as blatantly as possible you know our costumes are are these sparkly bow ties and (laughs) we have these kind of funny little moments where we both try to climb this you know we both go after the same rope and then there's a little like hey get out of here and there's is a playfulness Mm. and I I love acting that on stage because it's so natural and the the founder of Circus Smirkus this incredible magical human called Rob Merman. He always used to say, you know, when you see the circus, the thing that sticks with you is seeing people enjoy what they're doing. And I can enjoy what I'm doing 
very naturally, if I'm not pretending to have this angst or attraction or competition, it's just like, here we are having fun. And, you know, the question is always like, well, what's the act about? (laughs) <laughs> which is a question I find to be really frustrating because it's like, it's a, a act about rope <laughs> <laughs> and how we are doing it. <laughs> no work. <laughs> well, to me, and also like, what's the act about kind of robs the audience of their ability to say what the act is about. To me, it feels like an act about interdependence. You know, that idea that you can like be on the same page, like need each other, but also not like, need each other to like save each other like you're both standing on your own two feet or hanging from your own two arms or sometimes one <laughs> arm um and like doing your thing but that you're working together to like create something bigger than both of you which is really cool yeah you can take that if you want you can okay. have yeah it's that when stuff. people ask you what it's about just be like, <laughs> yeah it's I'll, I'll write, i gotta write that down <laughs> yeah i don't know for me it's just like i i have a hard time see uh, pretending to act a certain way that I've seen other people do before like mm-hmm. I don't have I don't have that theatrical experience that I can like oh I reach for it I turn away it's like there's PJ she's having fun hey I'm here too <laughs> let's just be ourselves that's good enough you don't ever have to be anything other than yourself on stage doing what you love doing full stop it sounds like that was like the huge learning experience where as you said the act was quote unquote finished it's like what what what's not finished about it there's just so many places you know every time we do it we learn something for example mm. that the, the massive difference of doing the act on a hard point than doing it on a pulley point or the mm. point that we had in russia was like 80 feet long it was insane <sighs> so to have some options within the act to to change or adapt can feel I can speak for both of us is always on the table because also we have in the in the act it's bookended by this synchronized bits and the middle has some solos so that PJ can show her amazing skills and I can show my amazing skill of just hanging <laughs> that's what I got so here you go it's a long one but... hanging to one arm for like ever in a meat hook is incredible and so sometimes it makes sense like PJ's uh, modified her solo a few times based on learning new skills or the space or what feels good, you know, and, and I'm here for it all the time. And my, my, the second part of my solo is this climb that sometimes I'm super efficient at and sometimes it's just terrible. So I'm like, oh, I'm always kind of working in my mind. Maybe that should be, maybe I should think about that being different. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, like we always kind of toss around the idea if we're performing it at a festival, they, you know, they want this element of danger. Should we make a huge drop at the end or somewhere in there so that we kind of can check off that box of a danger element? So I guess it's not finished in the sense that we're happy to modify it based on where we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you did the circus princess. Fe- Is that what it's still called? Circus Princess Festival. Very cool. Can you talk about the difference between being on tour with a circus, Circus Monty, and then doing a festival? How do you present the act differently? Much. I feel like the difference in a festival and on being on tour is there's like the stakes are a little higher in the festival in that you only have maybe two or three chances to present the best version of what you have. Whereas on tour, it's not that like a Tuesday two o'clock show doesn't matter because there's people paying to watch you, but you know, okay, well, uh, I'm a little tired. It's 2 PM show. Um, I'm a little bit sleepy. I'm going to use the show to kind of wake up. You just have a, mm. a bit more opportunities on tour to turn it out, <laughs> you know, and some days you're not feeling it. And when you have a, you know, your schedule is like 150 shows, you're like, okay, not every show is going to be super duper on. And I can accept that in my ego that it's not going to be perfect ever. Although in a festival, you really want it to be the best version. So you take extra ibuprofen <laughs> or something. <laughs> I, I just feel like yeah. that's a difference. On tour, you just have more opportunities to show, although every time the audience is new. So, but 
on an, at a festival, you know, there's judges, there's other people competing and you always want to present yourself well, but on tour, you have some more time to just be a bit more relaxed, I guess, get more, you can get yeah. more into it and get more used to it. And like, ah, oh, well, the Tuesday two o'clock show wasn't my best, but we have another one tonight and there's more people coming. So I guess that's a big difference. How were you received at the festival? Oh, uh, Okay, so they love you. I hope they, they love you. <laughs> uh, first of all, the audience in Russia was so warm, hmm. friendly, clapping, cheering, so into all of the acts. They had a blast. And I wasn't expecting that. I suppose I thought that um, a Russian audience might be a bit more stern or quiet or, you know, they've seen the craziest yeah, things yeah, yeah. in Russia. I mean, That's what 80s. I was, I would be intimidated by too, because, you know, like they're so discerning there because they're well, so educated. They have seen bears ride bicycles. So seeing some people on a rope, they're like, well, but uh, I've, overall, the feedback that we got from Russia was really positive. <laughs> um, the the thing that we heard the most from other artists and the producer and some of the technical team was sheer amazement that we stayed on the rope the whole time. <laughs> and we were like, well, yeah, because, right, that's... What, what else are you going to... It's a rope back. A lot of the other aerial acts had the ability to go up and down. And so people could come off of their equipment and then go back on it. And people were impressed that we stayed on for the whole, you know, like six minutes, six and a half ish. That's long. Also, there were people who were like, oh, your act is really long. I think it was yeah. very positive, but I did think those things were very funny. <laughs> you guys stay up there the whole time. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we wouldn't know what to do if we came down. <laughs> <laughs> like, what would we do? what are you do with your hands? Yeah, yeah we would do the can can or something. Like, no. Probably mm -hmm. some grand gesture to the audience, take five bows and then get back on the road. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it was really interesting. Uh, you know, the the aerial acts that won crowns, because of course at the Circus Princess Festival, the prize is a crown. The aerial acts that won crowns had the element of danger, whether mm -hmm. that was being pulled up with the pulley all the way to the top, super duper high, like 60 plus yeah. feet yeah. or they spun, you know? Um, and so our act stood out because it didn't, you know, it's fixed. It's a fixed point. And it was interesting that the, it was interesting just to, to feel still confident and proud of what we do, knowing that it stands out, but it doesn't stand out in the way that other festival aerial acts stand out. Uh -huh. I kind of felt like, yeah, well, I know our act is good and it's deserves to be here and be seen. It doesn't, it doesn't check the same boxes as the ones that won because it's so different. I'm like, oh, but it's so different. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next for Girls Gone Rope? I know that's always like a really stressful question, but <laughs> sometimes it has a cool answer. So I always have to ask. Yeah, I we just got rejected from Cirque de Dama, <laughs> which I always apply to, even uh -huh, though I'm uh -huh, way uh -huh. over the age limit. However, yeah. they have a box for, you know, if your act deserves an exception. Yes. And why? So um, that will not be next for Girls Gone Rope. We just were rejected. <laughs> but, uh, next year, I have some more solo work. Uh, like PJ said about casting a wide net, I feel that the act I mean, I have goals for it. I, there's places I want to do it and I, I really enjoy doing it. I would love to continue to do it. It's fun and it's, you know, it's pretty much set. We don't have to, the hours that we have to put into it are just getting back into shape, which takes two months, apparently two months about. <laughs> yeah. Having rope be my primary apparatus and the skills that I choose for my solo act being in a different, like technical, technical difficulty like more technically difficult. This act is the hardest one to get in shape for, for me. The mm. on rope. It is an endurance, like extravaganza of, I just, of, just this value that's so crazy to me. 
It's it's so hard. <laughs> it just kicks my. And that's breath. saying something. I feel like because you're a runner and you're like a a pretty, I don't know, in shape person. DJ is so fit. <laughs> She's very fit. But this is She's so very this fit. act is hard. It's so hard. It hands it right yeah. back to you. You just like feel like you've been in a meat grinder at the end of rehearsal, and your hands it's are a marathon really situation shredded. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's a very hard act to get in shape for, and it takes longer than any other act that I've been hmm. part of for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also okay. just to kind of like sync back up together, find the moments, connect it, Yeah, uh, you know, it sure. doesn't take too long. We start wearing the same outfits to training and <laughs> showing up. The same pants, the same super cool same pants. pants, same, same sweatshirt. sweatshirt. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It's definitely a marathon. There, there's so many parts that I, I like find that I get to in the act. I'm like, okay, we're here. And I'm like, oh, it's only here. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> or like, oh God. there's like one part where I always have this little check-in with myself. I'm like, my grip feels pretty good. All right, I feel good. And it's probably been like, I don't know. It's like within the first 13 seconds of the act. I'm like, I don't know why this is my check-in. <laughs> this is too soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So my last question, I'm going to ask, uh, yeah, let's do this. What advice would you guys give to yourselves at the beginning of creating Girls Gone Rope? Because I'm sure the advice would not be don't make this act so hard. I think you're both very proud of the fact that your act is as hard as it is. Totally. Uh, have my thinking face on. I would say it's something that I feel like we discovered later. I wish we had discovered sooner, which is life's short. This is fun. And hmm. the more that we focus on having fun during our rehearsals, just the better everything worked. It's not worth stressicas ever existing. And... Um, yeah, and any time that we made something fun or we had fun doing it, it showed in the choreography, and that should be the focus. Yeah, totally. I'm like, I think we kind of nailed it. Advice? <laughs> <laughs> Go back. Kidding me? Like, we're like, I think like, we kind of nailed it. Like, just, you're, I love like, that. You're already a star. You, it's it's we're already. already... <laughs> good. We already won. We already won <laughs> the crown. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I would agree with PJ. Yeah. En enjoy enjoy it and share that because ultimately you're giving something to people, and if you enjoy yeah. it. They don't have a choice anyway, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they paid the ticket. They got to sit and watch it. Yeah, they well, want to have fun too. Well, I got to thank y'all both for not only showing up today to do the podcast, but showing up in the studio and like making the thing because it is so cool to watch and seeing the videos of it, which I will for sure put in the show notes and everything. But you're inspiring me. You're inspiring so many. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. That was my interview with Eve and PJ of Girls Gone Rope. Yes. Um, this was such a fun interview to do. And I think the most fun and most refreshing part of it was just talking to two people who took their work so seriously and took their fun so seriously. Both of them really emphasized the need to really enjoy what they were doing and eliminate the Stressicas from the act, or from life in general. Goodbye, Stressica. Really, there's not much more to say except for go check out these ladies, these women, these girls. Um, girls Gone Rope. You can find them at eveonthesswing.com slash girlsgonerope. I'm also going to drop a link in the show notes so you can just click that and directly check out the videos. They're also on Facebook as Girls Gone Rope and on Instagram at girls underscore gone underscore rope and if you want to follow me on instagram for aerial training tips and inspiration i'm at the underscore artist underscore athlete come on underscores i'm also on tiktok at the underscore artist underscore athlete i'm on facebook the artist athlete my website's theartistathlete.com and if you love what you're listening to every single week patreon.com slash the artist athlete is the place to go and yes i will be on there during the holidays I'm not the most active on Patreon um, because it's for this podcast, but during the holidays, I always like to do something, something a little special, special. So I will talk at you in 2022, friends, fans, and foes. 
The Artist Athlete Podcast is supported solely by donations from people like you. Here's what some of those people have to say. Hi, my name is Noah and I do hand balancing. Hi, my name is Woody and I do Leo work. Thank you for listening to the Artist Athlete Podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Dominique, a ground acrobat, trapeze artist, and coach, currently bringing circus to the extremely cold but very beautiful Northern Ontario, Canada. Circus has changed my life and I'm so grateful to everyone in this community. Find me on Instagram at domupsidedown or my website, domupsidedown.com. Aloha, my name is Beth Russell and I live on the beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii. I am an aerial artist and movement instructor specializing in chakra yoga to keep me balanced and grounded. I play with silks, trapeze, lira, rope, acro, aerial yoga and dance, slack lining, pole, bungee and climbing. Really anything that goes up and allows me to explore 3D space. You can find my dedicated aerial page on Instagram at Maui Aerialist. If you find yourself coming to Maui, let's play. Hey there, friends, fans, and enemies. This is Chris Alston, Patreon of the Artist Athlete Podcast. Straps artist and Lyra performer and acrobat out of Greenville, South Carolina. So if you're ever passing through, make sure to stop in and see me and my friends. We have a wonderful space and we'd love to see you. Hi, my name is Erica Lee. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm an aerialist. I teach performing arts to elementary school during the day and do pole and swing and rope by night. I really, really like the Artist Athlete podcast because it gives me a lot of circus goals to look forward to. It gives me a lot of insight on what's going on around the world in circus. And that's why I'm Patreon. Hello, all. Thank you for tuning in to the Artist Athlete podcast. I am Opal Schwartz from Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're ever in the city, feel free to stop by the Aviary Minneapolis. It's a great time. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and goodbye. Hey there, artists and athletes. This is Andy Smith, owner and artistic director at Saltaire Circus School in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. And I want to thank you for contributing to the Artist Athlete Podcast. If you ever find yourself down in Florida, come check us out. Whether you're an artist, athlete, or someone ordinary just looking to be extraordinary, we got a place for you. 